Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss the top 4 questions from the M Solution Programming Contest 2020 from AdCoder. So let's start. The first two questions are very simple, so, but, so let's roll through them very fast. The first question is, you are given the highest rating of a person X and in AdCoder competition, uh, the rating is given in KU, KYU, in which if their rating is 400 to 599, it's 8 KU. So 600 to 799, it's 7 KU and so on. So you are given some rating and you have to find out what is the MK, MKU number. So it's just very simple. You just take the input of X and see in whichever range that X lies, just output the falling M corresponding to that number. So let's assume that the number is uh, 725. So it lies in this range because it's uh, like smaller than 799. It's it is 7 k so answer is just 7 so that's a simple question just i take it down to the code part now the code is also very simple it's the input of x and uh, like for every number if x lies between this range output 8 if in this range output 7 and so on you can manually write it for all the numbers and that's the question okay let's move on to the second question so you are given three cards a b c and it is some integer written on it you can you are a magician and you can do at most key operation in every operation what you can do you can choose any of the th three cards and multiply the integer on it by two after these op magic operations you have to check that the integer on the green card must be greater than the red card and the integer on the blue card must be greater than the green card which means that this should be greater or uh, this should be forming an uh, like ascending series which is which is blue greater then green, green greater than red. Okay, so you are given these cards and key. So what you can easily do here is because we want that the B should be greater than A, we can keep multiplying this number with two until it becomes greater than, strictly becomes greater than A. Now, because it becomes greater than A, we will multiply C with two till it becomes greater than or equal to B. If both of these conditions are satisfied within our k range that we have sufficient k to multiply these numbers and make them in such order, then the answer is yes, we can do and answer is no. So what I have told you, you will keep multiplying b until it becomes greater than a and then keep multiplying c until it becomes greater than b till we have some k left. So that's a simple logic. I'll take it down to the code part. The code is also very simple. In which what you will take, take the input of a, b, c and k, take the input, you do a while loop till a, so you will keep on multiplying till a is greater than equal to b because till a is greater than b, we will keep multiplying b with 2 and also we have to check that k should be greater than 0, then only we can do this operation. So at, at each multiplication with b, we will decrement our k. When b become greater than a we will move to the second loop in which we will multiply keep multiplying c with 2 until c becomes greater than b strictly greater than b and after this operation what we will check that this condition holds true if this condition holds true after this key operations we have these key operations we have done these operations if our this condition is satisfied with the two condition given in the question we output yes or else no Second question. Third question is M Kun is a student in which the person gives end term examination. In the end term examination, what you will do for the first k minus terms, you are not given any grades. And for the for the next k to n terms, what you will do, you will multiply the score of the last k exams, including the exam on the grade you are given. And then what you will do, M Kun scored AI in the examination. For each of those K1 to N examinations, you have to determine whether his grade is strictly greater than the grade of the previous term. Okay, so what does this mean? As you can see, to understand this example. So, 3 means that for the first 3 exams, you will not give any grade. Okay, now what you will do here is for the first 3 examinations, the grade is if you just multiply all these numbers for the next examination what you will do you will 
take this window size of 98, 95 and 100 and if this window size, this multiplication is greater than this multiplication of this window, then the answer is yes. As you can see, it is increased. Else, if it is smaller than or equal to, we have written no. It should be strictly greater than. The ith term grade should be greater than the i minus 1 term grade. So how we can check? Because the numbers are very large. We cannot just multiply everything. Okay, so what you can easily see here is if this is the window of size k. Now, if we, what we will do, if we take this number in the next term, we will remove this number. If this number which we take is greater than the number we removed, then we definitely know that the window multiplication will increase. Why? Because we are removing a smaller number and we are multiplying with a greater number. Else, if this number is equal to this number which we are removing or this number is smaller than the number which we are removing, then, then our total term grade will decrease. Okay, so what we will do, for F, we will iterate from this number till the last number and we will check that if this number is greater than i minus k, is the, the i-th term, then i minus k is this term. If this is greater than the i-th minus k term, then the answer is yes. Else, we will print out no because this is smaller than this term. And we'll print out because if we take this window, we have come from this window to, to this window. We have removed 98 and incremented multiply with 20. Because we have removed 98 and multiply with 20, the, the total window size of total window multiplication will decrease. And that's the whole number. I'll take that as a full part. We can take the input of all the numbers. And for numbers from k till n, what we'll check that if the ith number is if the ith number is greater than i minus kth number then the answer is yes because the total multiplication of the window will increase as the answer is no that's the whole logic for the third question the fourth question is a well-known question with some trick the fourth question is you are a multi-millionaire you are a millionaire sorry m kun and you have decided to make trading in which you know the trading of the end days. So let's assume that you have currently 100 yen. So you have 1000, sorry, not 100, 1000 yen and no stocks. So let's assume that you are a person and you have 1000 yen and no stocks. Now what you will do, you will know the stock price for the next end days as you have seen. Okay. So what you will do for every next day, what you can do, you can like give your money and buy some stock. And then for some other day, you can sell your stocks and take out your money. Okay, so it's just a simple question as what's the best time to uh, buy and sell stock. You can go on lead code and check out that question. It's just some form of change in that question. So what you will given that you are given the stock price of the single stock. So a single stock on the stock market of a particular company cost 100 rupees on the first day and 130 on the second day. So what you can easily do here is, so let's assume that you have 1000 rupees or 1000 yen. You, if you, if each stock price is 100 rupees, you can buy 10 stocks. If you buy 10 stocks and on the next day, the stock price becomes 130. Now, if you sell all the 10 stocks on 130, then what you'll observe that the total amount you get is 10 stocks multiply with 130 of per stock value, so 1300. So initially on the first day you have 1000 rupees and on the next day you have 1300 rupees. So after all these days, what is the maximum money you can get after end of all these trading days? So you have to output that. So as you can see for this number, the output is 1658. So you start with 1000 and you end up with 1658. So what you can easily observe by making some test cases, I'll take it down to the drawing board. If you take this number, for all such type of question, try to draw some valley because that's a simple valley and hill for such type of question. Okay, so this is 100, let's assume. This is, is increases of 130. Then this has become constant to 130, 130. Then it decreases, but not till 100. This is 100. So it, it, it gets something to 115. Then it become 115 again 
and then it shoot up to 150. So that's the whole thing. Now, if you take this stock, you want to buy it to the next day because the price increase. But if you sell it on this day also, then there is no matter. But you should not sell it on this day because the price, if you sell it on this day, then it's more beneficial on selling on this day. Because if you buy and sell on this day, then also it's profitable. But if you sell on this day, then it's more profitable. So what you can easily see here is you can buy all stocks on this day, then sell it on this day. Then again, buy more stocks on this day and sell it on this day. So what we are actually doing here is we are or if you not see this buy on this day and sell it on this day. So we are in seeing what is the maximum increasing subsequent not subsequent sub array. So what are the continuously increasing sub arrays in this whole array? What are the like this is an increment in which it is increasing sub array. Okay, this is an increasing sub array. Okay, so what you can do you take 1000 rupees buy as much as stock you can on this day and so you bought 10 stacks 10 stocks and you have 0 rupees then on this day you sell all the stocks you have 0 stocks and you have 1300 rupees now you come to this day you have 1500 rupees you cannot 150 115 115 for every stock you cannot like divide 1300 1, perfectly by 115 but you can see that approximately 11 stocks you can uh, like buy so what you will do you will buy 11 stocks and the rest amount of money you will left out with 35 now what you will do you will sell all these stocks on this day and the total will become 1685 so that you will add 11 into this amount plus the, the amount which is left as you can see so what's the logic here because you can also check out that question on lead code also but the simple logic is we have to see how much total increment is there okay and whenever there's an increment there's a decrement and then there's an increment there's a lower point and an upper point for every low to upper point you will uh, like because there's a profit here you can sell some stocks here buy some stocks here and sell it here sell buy some stock here and sell it here so that's always give you some profit so that's the whole trick so you just have to find out these like increasing sub arrays in the whole area so what i'll take you under the code part to make it more clear the <coughs> sorry these are the arrays n take the input of all the n arrays this is the starting money you have okay J denotes the starting point for the increasing sub array. Okay, if AI plus one, if the next number is greater than the ith number, then we keep on increasing. The next part of the sub array is increasing. So just continue. Else, if the next number is smaller, because we if we keep on increasing, then it's no problem. But if the next number is smaller than this number, then this is the peak. We started from this, which is marked by J, and this is the peak then the number decreases from here. So what we'll do, you keep on increasing till this point. This is the top point, this is the lower point. Then sell all your stocks at this point, the maximum stocks you can buy at this point and then sell at this point. So what you can do, the number of stocks you can buy at the jth point is this. Then the total money you will get is, you will money minus the stocks you have bought into this uh, the total money at the gth point the starting index because you have bought all the stocks at the lower price and then the new money is you will increase the stock the total number of stocks you have bought on the lower price into the new price which is a larger price okay so that's the total money change you have seen the total new money is in this now and now the new j is at this point this is incremented then it, dec it decreases so our new j is this point and then it keep on increasing again and then it can decrease keep on increasing again so at the point it decreases the j changes okay now what you can see let's assume that the 
the hill just increases so you buy all the stocks at the first day and then it keep on increasing 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 then you just keep on continuing and you will not do anything so what you'll do you will check that if the j point after end of this loop is not equal to the last point in which means that we have taken the first point of the stocks and we come out of this loop so what's the benefit is we just because j marks the starting point and i or the last index marks the last point because it is always increasing we can just sell all the stocks on the first day and buy all the stocks on the last day or vice versa sorry we buy the stocks on this day and sell on this day so what you can do that what you have done if j is not equal to n minus 1 and then what you will see then what you will see that at the last point also we will do the same thing okay and output the total money which is the final money we will get that's the logic for the four, first four questions stay tuned for more videos i'll see you in the next one keep coding bye